Welcome to African Justice Media. Now, and small and medium-sized enterprises in Uganda, they contribute 90% of the Ugandan private sector. According to UBOS, the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, and the small and medium-sized enterprises have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, what are we with in our social impact program? Today, I'm with Gilbert Bambali, the co-founder of Halambe Africa, small enterprise that is run by small entrepreneurs in Uganda. Now we speak to him about the impact of COVID-19, what are the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and what could be the way forward towards solving this. My name is George Justice Kanyehamba and welcome to African Justice Media, the social impact program. Now those who are following us on YouTube, just make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell and then on Facebook, follow us at African Justice Media. Mali, welcome to African Justice Media on the Social Impact Program. Thank you, Justice. All right, now let's go straight forward. Um, would you tell our viewers more about you and what you do? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, like you said, Wambale Gilbert is my name. Uh, yeah, most of the people have called me the CEO of Harambe.Africa. But I believe that if we've been a group of people and we've collectively come up with something, I don't, always don't want to have that hierarchy. Uh, so I just call myself a co-founder of Harambe.Africa. Okay, now, um, getting you from there, what does Harambe.Africa do? And what is its law? What are the, some of the activities as a small, um, a small enterprise based in Uganda? Oh, critical. Um, uh, when you talk about Harambe, it's a Swahili word. And of course, the mayor or talking about Harambe, it brings you to something that came up in existence way back during the construction of the railway of the Uganda or the East African Railway Line during the 1880s. And, and so that's when we had the East African tribes coming together and collectively putting efforts together to come up with something. So in simple terms, you can simply say Harambe is let's come together or let's pull together and we have something. So basically, so that's it means Harambe. Less, it's like unity. Let's come together. Africa was, as absolutely, was absolutely. Africa. This right. this is a chant of uh, community that was used uh, to putting of fire. Let's say if there was a fire outbreak, so uh, someone who noticed the fire would call up uh, the community to come and help out to see that the fire has been set. So going forward, Harambe is not just that as we've seen it or as we hear today, but um, it's way bigger. It's broad. Because for us, we thought that if we can collectively come together as a group of artists, we will be able to at least reach the world. How do you manage to reach the world? And what services do you specifically offer or products? Thank you. An enterprise. Um, like you said, first of all, I didn't want to first go any further without mentioning this. Yeah, as a libertarian, we've had at least some social connections and some links to the entire world. So... Yeah, we have had a lot of uh, friends coming to Uganda and in this particular point, I'm referring to the tourism sector. So the biggest or the biggest clientele of the African or the Ugandan art has been the tourist. And, and in this, uh, since the COVID-19 breakout, we have seen a lot of uh, numbers diminishing Actually, this is when we are from the first lockdown of 2020, where we saw all the international airports being closed down and the restrictions of the traveling of uh, the tourists actually affected us hugely. And as Harambe was us, we sat down with some of the colleagues in the US and the artists around Uganda. And we thought that if we make this umbrella where we shall coordinate the rest of the artists in Uganda, and, and Africa at large, we shall be able to hit or to reach the market. Uh, we are doing this. Uh, Harambe is uh, not the everyday uh, arts gallery. It's an online gallery where we have got the website. We are on social media. We are on Facebook. Uh, we are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. Uh, so we don't have a physical 
uh, a specific gallery okay, but just to hold you a bit now an enterprise like yours and there are many enterprises that uh, resemble your enterprise how has the COVID-19, you know, restrictions on the economy, because it has really reduced economic activity, yet yours is online. How has it affected you, yet it's online? Yeah, actually, that's why I was coming. Uh, now, as, as Harambe, we, we thought we can actually capitalize on internet and we'll be able to post, publish all our work, our arts work. And it's, it's, we shall be able to to meet the, the I said a clientele and this clientele I was talking about the tourists are uh, people from the US people from UK uh, people from Asia so we have had to use the internet to be able to publish all our artwork on 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 our website and and we've actually been able to to, to run the advertisements on Google on Facebook so we are we are doing this as a, a solution or we are trying to mitigate the problem of the clients that would come to Uganda and purchase this art and we are able to meet the same clients online so when someone wants to buy from us it's just simple you just go on your Google and then type in harambe.africa they will display you our gallery you'll be able to point out you'll be able to place your order and we shall be able to ship you your piece and you'll be able to receive it without having to come to Uganda so that's how we are mitigating the problem of us operating amidst the restrictions of travel. Now, I want you to focus on the issue of ever since the COVID-19 uh, lockdown in Uganda started and many other countries in Africa. Yeah. Businesses have been closed, workers have been laid off, and there has not been travel, or there has been a restriction on travel. Now, what I want you to uh, give an highlight on, you could be the voice to many other enterprises out there who cannot speak for themselves, but you've gotten a chance to speak for many small and medium-sized enterprises. What are the challenges do they face in Uganda? Yeah, right. Especially uh, in relation to COVID-19. Yeah, I would actually take it from there. But one of the challenges that the SMEs or the small-scale uh, enterprises are facing is the the taxes that has been imposed on data so i actually would like to put this out that if i personally or oh harambe if there has been a lot of taxes put on data then we shall not be able to trade because the only medium we publish our work is through internet so i can assure you that uh, it's like an appeal to the government leaders or the leadership in the country that if they can uh, at, at least put uh, some reduction on, on the internet and, and then have to let our youths or people operating or the small enterprises in the country be able to at least use or capitalize on internet because today I am able to speak to someone in the US. I don't have to be in America. That's why when I'm making my shipments or my shipments to the clients in the US or in the UK, I don't have to go there. Just have to put... So in other words, you are saying that data is the biggest problem to you. There, the data being... Absolutely, basic. absolutely. Then two? Yeah, uh, the other uh, would be capital. But then for me, as an entrepreneur, I don't base on capital as a problem or as a challenge because I believe that the little you have, the brain that we've, give, we've been given, we can capitalize on that and then we're able to... Yeah, for actually, if I may point this out, that for us, we've not even have to come with a lot of or huge sums of money. We've had a lot or something very little and then we've started. So the best thing we're having is uh, the only expenses we're incurring is data. That's what I can tell you. So that is, that's so interesting that an entrepreneur does not need a lot of capital to start up. It's just the mindset, the creativity. Okay, now take us through the solutions. What could be the possible solutions to, uh, you know, promote enterprises like you? Um, yeah, I, I, I would actually also say that, as we've said, that data is one of the problems. So you can get, if we have data, or if the country can come up, can come up and, and, and they say, yeah, we let's let's put off data i mean let's put off the taxes that has been slapped on data and that's one of the solutions then the other thing is one the youths today we don't have to think that i have to start up with something huge the only thing we can do is when you have that mindset is when you have that call you're chasing 
trust me, if you can sit down and you either two and then have to discuss that idea you have having and then maybe put it on paper. And then the following morning you start up small. Trust me, you will be able to start up. And then <clears throat> the other thing, I would actually be um, the, the, the free markets. I do believe that if they are free markets, uh, trust me, I will be able to transact business with someone in the US. I will be able to transact business uh, with someone in Kenya. In, in, in other words, actually, one of our main goals is to have the rest of the African, con the, the rest of the African countries connected to Harambe so that we may be able to also be part of their solution to their problems. Talking about cutting the taxes, <coughs> how would the government maintain its warfare system without the taxes to support it? Knowing it very well that the revenue is actually generated from the taxes to run the social services. So where government is double tax, you come on data when you purchase data or when you buy airtime from a telecommunication company, you are taxed. The same data you're buying data on, you still taxed. Now, I agree with you that, um, according to you, boss, 90% um, of such enterprises, of such startups, actually make up the engine of the economy, of the private sector, because 90% of the private sector is actually made up with um, such enterprises, or small and medium sized enterprises. Now, uh, looking at the road to economic recovery in Uganda, what robust plan can you bring as a policy recommendation to help us build back better? Um, uh, yeah, interesting. I think that um, to myself, because I, I have to say on behalf of Arambe and what we've gone through, is that uh, government does not need uh, borrowing from out, maybe going to uh, World Bank to get some grants and loans. All we need, the, the little we have, the little we have, we can capitalize on that. We shall call it from there. He is an interesting speaker. Let's take a break and come back in just a second. Stay on. Um, putting in mind that there could be people who need partnership, the clients. How can anyone find you since you said you're an online enterprise or startup? Yeah, that's one of the interesting parts, uh, in, in other words, when you're talking about uh, business. Uh, of course, as an e-commerce business, yeah, one is able to connect to us when you go to Google and then you put in harambe.africa, that is on website. Uh, also another medium, you can meet us on Facebook, that is uh, the African Art Exchange, this Harambe. And then on Twitter, harambe.africa. On Instagram, the same. So, yeah, we also actually receive uh, emails on our website. Uh, that is at service harambe. You will be able to get us. Thank you. Now, as we wind up, what could be your policy recommendations or any recommendation to both the stakeholders in, in the society? Yeah, I, I think I have to only have to cite two things. One, I will be the major one, which is uh, letting uh, data free. One, this is one of the, the livelihoods that the youths are leveraging on or capitalizing on so if government may have to come up and put reductions on data uh, trust me you have uh, the booming in small scale enterprises and then two uh, is having to government coming up with uh, small small loans uh, like you've seen the parish model from government where groups of uh, organized people come together and then they're given all the benefit from this taxpayers money because I no believe that now, like for us, Arambe, the only thing that we're left with is uh, to, to help us to run this business. Because uh, if I can tell you that the, the expenses that we're incurring on data, it's a lot. Yeah, because going to every artist and get their work. Remember, these artists are in just not one place, like I said. We don't have a physical or something, though we are in plan to do that. But let's have some funding from government in form of loans. Yeah, so that's what I can bas basically say. Right, now we shall get um, uh, to that topic later of uh, the effectiveness of the government loans, but I would like to thank you. Thank you for hosting our invitation.
on the uh, African Justice Media Social Impact Show. You're welcome and thank you for hosting Karambe dot Africa. Thank My name so is Gilbert. Uh, to the viewers, I believe you've learned a lot of things from our distinguished guest today. And just stay tuned on. We still have a lot for you. I'm George Kanyahamba, African Justice Media.